In this video, I'm going to show you how to find basic descriptive statistics and their associated graphs in JAS. To do that, first thing you need to have some data. I'm going to open a data set, a fictional data set that I've created for using here on YouTube. I will have a link to it available in the notes under the video so you can find it and follow along if you'd like to do that. If you wish to, pause and go get the data set and come on, come on back so you can follow along with what I'm doing. And here you can see I've got the data listed. I can scroll across the top. Okay. I want to make sure my data is of correct type. Gender um, is nominal. I, I talk about this in the, in the um, data basics video. Those are both nominal variables, so I'm going to switch those. I could code that the one means strongly disagree, two means disagree, and so forth for these, but I'm not going to because I don't really need to. So for this video, I'm going to click on Descriptives. And you see here an interface, and in some ways reminds me of SPSS. I feel like there's some SPSS influence here. And I'm going to, I can click any item, click on that little arrow, and it pops over in the variables box. The variables box indicates which variables are included in the analysis. And then you can see over here that I immediately have a table pop up that shows the default statistics, which is the mean standard deviation, min and max, well, number missing, number valid, included for this particular variable. If I want quite a few of them, you see, see now scale one's not over here because it's been moved over. Um, I can um, also double click, goes a little faster on each one and they automatically pop over. It also works to click on the first one, do that shift, hold down shift, click on the last one, and drag them over as, as well. Oops. So that's also something that can be done. Now, if you're trying to do something that doesn't let you drag it over there, it's because you're trying to do something that cannot be done for that variable type. And that's where having it labeled as nominal, interval, or scale, which means interval ratio correctly, needs, needs to take place. And you do that by toggling from here back to the data window. And right there, you can fix it. So. Here I have my table. As you can see, I can't see the whole thing. It goes off the screen because I have 20 columns. I can hide here, um, hide the input screen. It lets me just see the results. And I, in that case, I can almost see the whole thing. But there's also this option right here. You see under the, uh, right under here, transpose descriptive tables. By doing that, it makes a nicer table. That's how I'd rather lay it out. So you can see you've got that table formatted this this way created for you, has the mean, standard deviation, min, max, and so forth. Um, you can select which statistics you want to include. So that's where these, these various options are going to come into play. So I'm going to click on statistics. For example, I may not want the valid column because it's the same for all of them. I may not want the missing column because it's the same for all of them. So there's no need to put that particular information in there. Um, maybe I want the median. Okay. You can, whatever um, particular statistics, and there's quite a few options here that you want to include, you can include those here, okay? Um, I may not, maybe I don't want the minimum, maximum, um, and so forth. So this is something where you need to, you can um, play with that a little bit. Now, there's, there's also um, various options, preferences that can affect a couple things, one being your rounding, okay? So if I go, um, if I go up here, I can um, go to my preferences and under um, results, I can change the number of decimals that I'm gonna get to the right of the decimal place. So maybe you only want two places, which is standard APA format, which is what I use. However, p-values require three places, so I, I just leave it all as three. I can always change that myself. So I've, so I've got those basics there. The next thing to be aware of that you can get in the summary here is the basic plots. So let's um, go down here. Okay. I can get a um, variety of kinds of plots here. Let's say that I want, um, I'm, if I'm considering this as categorical data, there are times when this Likert type data is considered interval ratio or scale. Other times it is considered um, um, ordinal, which it actually is. And so, so there's a ver variety of options here you have to look at basic, basic plots. OK, 
okay, you can look at pie charts if you want. It's going to create pie charts for every single one of them there, which will take up a lot of space and you can scroll down and see them all. They're not usually recommended that you use pie charts with in quantitative research. You can look at dot plots, plots, excuse me, which are basically simple, simplified histograms, which work pretty well in this particular case. Okay, and um, a variety of other plots. If you click on distribution plots, you'll see what shows up here. You're going to get your basic bar chart or histogram, depending on which is appropriate for your type of data. And you can scroll down and see all of those there, see what's going on with this particular data. So those, those things you can find here, and there's a variety of other types of data as well. So that's something to be aware of. Um, when you are doing a study, you don't necessarily have to find your plots here um, within the descriptive statistics interface because often you can also get them in your others. So if um, in your t-test, you can get appropriate plots there and so forth. So you can get a, um, the appropriate ones you want other places as well. There's also the option for these customizable plots, okay, um, if you want to do something a little bit more complicated, and that's because, again, this um, JASP is a GUI that wraps around R software. R software does quite a lot in terms of, of graphs, so there are some complicated options that you can play with here, and you can also create tables, okay. So for my particular data, if I'm treating it as ordinal data, I may want to look at frequencies rather than mean standard deviations. That's often the more logical thing to do. So I can click on that and it's going to give me these frequency tables, including um, percents and cumulative percents for my data. So I can go through and look at that for each of them as well. Okay, so that's, that's the basic of, you know, there's really kind of a huge variety of things you can look at. If you need help with any of the functions, click on the I and it'll give you a, a pop-up window that shows a variety of, of things that, that can be done and even what R packages this comes from that's being used here. So, so that's briefly what you can find. Just really quickly, if you want to save your results, print your results, I can, um, clicking on the results here, I can um, click on copy or export my results, copy it just to my so I can paste it somewhere or I can export. I can add notes in, some typing in of any kind as I want to go. Um, I can also, and that will give me everything in the results window, which may be things from any variety of analyses I worked on at that in that session. I could also just say I want just the stuff from this one of this descriptive statistics module. And so in that case, um, I can click copy here and it'll just copy this section which is everything we've done in this video all of the the video all of this just descriptive statistics or I can click on just one element like a table and and copy that so it gives me a variety of options in terms of being able to copy and paste to somewhere else another thing to be aware of is as you run an analysis as you see this carrot here that means this is kind of the active analysis I'm doing. Of course, it all changes live. You know, if I were to take out some variables, put some in, that will change immediately. I can also um, close that. That opens and closes that interface. My results window stays open. And the reason that you might do that is because you might then do another analysis. Maybe, for example, I'm going to do um, a t-test. And you'll see here, now I have an interface for t-test, which we're not going to do in this video that it shows you that we've got multiple these modules we can go back and forth from. And the results window will show you the results of everything. It'll show you everything you did that, sec that session. I may have six analyses here of different types. Maybe I go back and I do now another descriptive statistics where I'm looking at um, these other three variables. And um, so I put, so I pop these over there. Okay, we're just, I'm just going to do these three here. Okay, and you'll see that it'll come down below that independent samples t-test is blank because I didn't actually give it any data or tell it anything to do. 
I'm not really doing that in the video. But you see here, it, it finds by default, okay, it finds the summary statistics as if it were an interval ratio variable, which makes sense for age, does not make sense for gender and race. So for gender and race, um, what we really want to do is we want to include tables instead. So what I typically would do is I'll look at my um, interval ratio ones as part of one procedure, this kind of a big this procedure here, and my categorical, which was this procedure, I should say, my categorical alone in this procedure, because then I can tell it okay, what I really want is frequency tables for these, because these are um, categorical variables right here. And so then I see for for uh, gender zero, which would be probably when I'm missing, I'd have to look at my data, one and gender two, how the percents and counts that I have, as well as maybe with three ethnic groups I have, the um, race, the frequency percent, and valid percent, and so forth. So I have those values um, popped in here. So again, I can close that, and you see I can... I can then go between which one I want to work on a little bit more as I work, and these are, are kept kind of separate and clean. And then when I go to save my results, maybe I want to only save the results now for this, this last descriptive statistics procedure. So I'm going to click on that um, and click on copy, and it will only give me this last bit that I did. It's not going to give me, it's, it's going to copy the clipboard only that and not the rest of what's in this results window. But if I want everything, I just take it from results copy. So it's kind of got that, I think it's a little bit of a logical framework that it uses to do that um, and um, allows you to kind of keep track of things and work through things in a clean way. Now, if you go ahead and just close this, you're going to, of course, lose all your work. You do want to, of course, save your work. It doesn't automatically save it under 